start your habit of continuous learning today. Visit nomadphp.com. Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are a 10-minute talk that gives a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10-minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now, we have a good friend of mine, Paul Jones, and he's going to be talking about the Atlas ORM. Uh, Paul, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Joe. So anyone who's worked with SQL and PHP for any amount of time is familiar with the troubles of, of marshalling tabular data into object-oriented domain models. The reason for this is that relational database techniques are just fundamentally different from object-oriented programming techniques. And this makes it a lot of trouble to convert from tables into objects and then back again. Now, over the decades of programming, developers have applied different data source architecture patterns to deal with moving information between objects in the database. And here are four of them that, that have been categorized and named by Martin Fowler and patterns of enterprise application architecture. And the first one is called row data gateway. Uh, the idea behind this pattern is to encapsulate the data from a single table row along with the persistence mechanism to retrieve that row from the database and save it back to the database. Active Record, which is, is probably more well known, is exactly like Row Data Gateway uh, in that it maps, it takes the row data and the persistence logic and keeps them in the same record, but it adds on the ability to put in some, uh, some light domain logic as well. Then there's Table Data Gateway, which encapsulates the access to all rows in a table all at once, along with the persistence mechanism to apply operations to an entire table, but it works on a single table, not multiple tables. And finally, we've got Data Mapper. Data Mapper encapsulates all of the persistence mechanisms across as many tables as it needs to for a domain object, that is, for an object in your domain model. And it keeps that domain object separate from the persistence mechanism so that the domain object never has a connection to the database. So we've got these data source architecture patterns, but at the same time, we're told by, by people who do domain building that we should not model our business logic or our domain logic on the database structure. So there are entire books dedicated to this idea like Domain Driven Design the idea that emphasize the idea that the business domain is something that exists out in the real world and it doesn't exist in the database. The database is just a storage location for data. And as a result, we're advised that our object-oriented domain models should be kept as separate as possible from the database structure. This fundamental difference between the domain of the business objects and the storage of data is something called the object relational impedance mismatch. The idea here is that converting between tabular rows and columns to object classes and inheritance structures seems like it should be easy, at least at first, but it turns out that it's exceptionally difficult. This is where object relational mappers or ORMs come into play. ORMs exist to help ease the conversion of this tabular and row data into domain objects by automating the generation of SQL, by retrieving and saving, that is by persisting the row data, and then by mapping the data that comes out of the database over the domain objects. There are two popular ways of doing this. We've already talked about two, we've already talked about an active record, which combines the SQL generation and the persistence mechanism and some light domain logic all in the same object. Uh, in this case, with active record, the persistence and the domain are combined into the same object. On the other hand, with data mapper, data mapper combines the SQL generation and persistence mechanism into one object called the mapper. But this mapper emits a plain old PHP domain object that has no connection to the database at all. The persistence and the domain in data mapper are kept separate from each other. Each of these has different trade offs. For straight forward CRUD or bread work, browse, read, edit, add, delete, for that kind of stuff, with simple domain logic that's attached to it, Active Record is great, it's easy to get started with, it's really very nice in those situations. But if the project you're working on grows in complexity or in scope, CRUD work is just not going to be enough for your domain stuff. You're going to need to end up, you're going to end up wanting a separate domain layer once you reach a certain level of complexity. The problem is that since Active Record handles everything itself, the persistence and the data and the domain logic, 
becomes very difficult to separate the domain logic from the persistence logic. This is because the persistence behaviors are part of the domain object when you have an active record. And that means that anything in the domain can interact with anything in a database at any point at all. These factors all lead to different maintenance and refactoring problems as the domain becomes more complex. With Data Mapper, on the other hand, you get a cleaner separation between the persistence logic and the domain logic. And that makes it easier over time to maintain and refactor the system as its complexity increases. The problem is that it's a lot harder to get starter, started with. Data Mapper presumes the existence of something, or presumes the pre existence of something like a rich domain model, and it presumes that you know how to map the database results directly over the domain model objects and back again when you have to save them. So using a, domain, using a data mapper and a domain model for simple CRUD work is probably overhead that you don't necessarily need to, uh, to go to the time of building, especially if your project time constraints don't allow for that kind of effort early on. So the underlying problem behind all of this is that every system starts out very simple. The problem is that it might become complicated later, and we don't necessarily know in advance what those complexities might be or if they're going to occur at all. We would like to think we could plan ahead if possible, so that if the system becomes complicated, we would have a good refactoring path, uh, a good refactoring and maintenance path to follow. So we would want a low-cost path in case of the complexity, but we just can't tell in advance if, something's, if the system is going to become complicated enough to require a data map for later. What we would really like in our perfect world is an ORM system that combines the positive aspects of active record and of data map for somehow. What we really want is something that's easy to get started with in simple cases, but as complexity increases, we want something with a clear refactoring path. We want an ORM that is amenable to simple CRUD or BRED operations early on, but as we explore the domain, we want to be able to add simple behaviors to the ORM, and then as the domain becomes really complicated, we want to be able to convert from using the ORM objects directly into something like a domain model proper. And the whole time, we want to maintain a good separation of concerns between the persistence mechanism and from the data being persisted. That sounds pretty difficult, but it turns out this kind of thing is actually possible. What we want to do is use the data mapper approach in the, uh, when it comes to the idea of separating the persistence mechanism and the data objects. But instead of having the data mapper map to a model of the business domain, what we wanted to do is map to a model of the persistence system. That is, the mapper should not return things like domain-driven design entities and aggregates and value objects. It should not return those. What we'd have it, what we have it do is have it return an object that maps to a table row and to the related rows in the database. That is, the mapper emits persistence model objects, not domain model objects. So this is where Atlas comes in. Atlas is a data mapper for the persistence model, not for the domain model. With Atlas, what you end up doing is you build a series of table data gateways, one for each table. Then you build a layer of mappers that define the relationships between those tables. Then you use the mappers to retrieve record objects that are composed of a master table row and then any other records that are related to, through that, related to that row through that mapper. So just as an example, here's what a mapper object looks like in Atlas. And it's very straightforward. There are, there's actually some command line tooling to help create this and the table data gateway for you. We can see that there's a set related method with many to one different kind of relationships. We give it a field name that we want to use for that relationship, and then we say map that relationship through this other mapper class. And here's how we would build a container of those of different mappers in Atlas. And in this case, we have something like a forum system where there are threads that are written by authors. There's a summary on each thread. Each thread can have many replies. The replies themselves can have authors. There are tags and tab taggings on, on each thread. So we put them all together with a database connection. Then we say, here are the mappers that are in the that are in Atlas. And then we say, give it container, give us back a new Atlas object. And what we've got, once we've got that in hand, it becomes very easy to do basic. CRUD, CRUD or BRED operations. They're very trivial. All you have to do is, uh, in, in this particular example, we're going to go out to Atlas. We're going to say select through the thread mapper the most recent 10 threads. And then when you bring me back these thread records, I want you to bring them back with these related elements. Give me back the author on each one, the replies, the taggings, the tags. 
And because each of these is happening through a separate mapper as a separate query, we have a, a great amount of power over each individual query so that we can say when we get the replies back, incidentally, I want the replies ordered by date ascending instead of descending. And when you bring me back the replies, bring me back the related authors on each reply. This all happens in a, in a non n plus one kind of, kind of situation so that you get a, a linear number of queries, not an exponential number of queries. Then once you've got them in hand, you just loop through the thread record set. You get back a thread record out of each one. You echo the, uh, the, the properties that are mapped to table columns directly, or you can go to a relationship, in this case, thread author, and get back a column from that related element, or you can count the number of elements in the, reply, in the replies, that kind of thing. So again, this is all very simple stuff. It's uh, just mapped directly to table columns. Saving records is just as easy and simple crud or bread operations. We can say either give me a new record or fetch an existing record, change the title on it, and then either insert it or update it. Uh, in the case of inserts, uh, Atlas knows enough that if there is a, an auto incremented column, it will actually update that column for it will bring back that column for you into the record. And again, remember these record objects are not connected to the database at all. So you can pass these records around throughout the system and not worry, have to worry about uh, making uh, database connections through them, you have to operate on them through the mappers. Now once you've reached the point where simple CRUD is not doing it for you, you can begin to add simple behaviors on the individual record objects. In this case we've got our author record and we'll say for example that throughout our system we find that we need to get the full name of the author over and over and over again. Well, instead of repeating that logic throughout the system we can just put a method on the, on the author record and say get me the full name by concatenating the first name and the last name. The author record has access to all of the, the rows on the author table, and it has access to all of its related elements if they happen to be present in that record. So you can do calculations uh, within a record on all of its related, all of its related elements. Then, as you realize that these simple behaviors are not doing it for you, you've expanded a little bit, you need to begin building a richer domain model. Refactoring, to, refactoring toward that richer, do, richer domain model is also very straightforward. What you end up doing is building a repository that uses the mapper as a data source, and then you can do one of two things. You can either compose the record into an aggregate, perhaps an entity, or you can map from the record data elements over to aggregate data, data elements. So in this case, we've got a thread mapper, we're going to fetch a thread by its ID, then we've got this protected function new thread that is a factory method using a thread record as its data source. We want to return a thread aggregate from this. We can do this in a couple of different ways. Again, we can compose the persistence record into the domain element so that when we build our thread aggregate, we can build our thread aggregate in such a way that it encapsulates the record and uses the record as a backing store, but never exposes the record itself. It only exposes its own interface. Or alternatively, we can do a little extra work and we can map from the thread record over to the thread aggregate uh, element by element and say we want to pass in the thread ID, we want to pass in the title as individual elements. This is actually the cleanest way of doing it. This is where you see uh, a strong domain mapping out of the persistence and away from persistence entirely instead of being backed by a record object. Now I can't go into too much more detail about the power that, it, that Atlas gives you in a talk this short. If you're interested in the persistence model approach, I recommend that you visit the Atlas repository or the documentation pages. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me directly, either on Twitter or on Gab or through my website. Thanks a lot for your time. Awesome. Thank you very much, Paul. Thanks for doing the talk. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com.